25 summers. Um, let's talk about um, the food in, in prison. Let's let's elaborate on that. You know, we out here mm. in society, we have all these choices and all these people with different diets and dietary stuff. Yeah. Um, explain for the people who may not be familiar with how the food and kitchens and things of that nature work in the New York prison system. Yeah, I worked as a penitentiary cook for like five years and I was over three different prisons where I cooked for over 2,500 prisoners and all of that, right? This is a luxury commodity out here compared to what them brothers eat. The food is not <clears throat> not wholesome. It, it doesn't have the vitamins, the minerals, or the nutrients. It's being pre-cooked, pre-prepared, stored in freezer bags. Sodium content is off the roof, out the roof, the sodium content on it. It's unwholesome. If you don't have high blood pressure, you will once you start congesting that over, ingesting that over the years period of time. So, you know, while I was a cook, I went through a lot of struggles with the administration, man, with the civilian cooks and all of that, man, because brothers that got wind, man, that this food wasn't really good. So they wasn't trying to eat that. So being a cook with my boy Black from Rochester, we used to spice up the food, man. We used to jazz it up, man. Like I was in charge maybe of doing bread pudding and I'll make the bread pudding, man, and I'll put 30, 40 cans of fruit cartel in it, man. Jazz it up real good, bake it up. And the brothers is like, yeah, it's a treat. They come into the mess hall to eat tonight and they talk about it in the yard later. Yo, that bread pudding was banging, right? Yeah, boom. Or we'll spice up the rice. We'll start throwing some seasoning in the rice while we cooking 80 pounds or 120 pounds of rice and we make some seasoning and turn it turn it curry color yellow or something like that and the brothers is loving that they come back they talk about it yo man that rice was banging man yo them dudes in there is cooking they doing their thing they showing us love but then we face the problems with the administration they claim that we using stuff over budgeting and all that we're not allowed to do this there's inmates that has high blood pressure diabetes and so on and you taking them on your liberty to spice up the food and all of that. You can cause someone to die, and all, which is right in a search, but they've not eaten this because it's not wholesome. It's not, it's food that was supposed to be prepared for farms. You bag it up and all of that and freeze it and store it and you feed your animals with it, man. You freeze it, sub zero freeze it, and when you're ready, you throw it out in the kettle, you bust it open, man, and it becomes cow food, it becomes pig food, it becomes whatever food for farm because it's the way it's prepared. And the brothers is eating it for years. So and, that, that, and that's the food they're feeding to prisoners in New York State that is meant for livestock, cows, yeah, and Yeah, cook, chill, by way of cork crab. Mm -hmm. So what's a typical day in the life of a prison um, cook, a kitchen cook? What's, how does it work? Yeah, I get up at like 3.30 in the morning, man, and I get down to the kitchen, man, me along with four or five other cooks, man, and we start preparing the meals for the day. We'll start out with the breakfast meal. We'll get like about seven, eight, 80, 100 pound bags of cornmeal, wheatina, uh, uh, farina, wheatina, and we'll prepare uh, like all of this cereal, hot cereal, and put it in inserts. We'll cook it in a big kettle, and then we'll empty the kettles into these inserts, and these inserts will be kept in steamers and kept the food hot to serve the meal that's coming in for breakfast. While the breakfast is being served by the line workers and the so on, we as cooks, we clean up the breakfast stuff and we prepare for the lunch meal. So what would a typical breakfast be like? Just farina? Farina, toast, uh, and maybe cold cereal. Or a cold cereal or a choice of powdered eggs or something like that on the side, you know? Um about coffee or orange juice, anything like yeah, that. Yeah, that's all that's all out on the serving line, you know. And they always they got somebody, man, that they, they, they puts these uh containers and they make the coffee in them and they cool the containers and they keep them hot and then they do the orange juice and everything is rationed out and it's being watched. So all of that's taken care of. We cook the main stuff, man, the main parts of the meal. So what about lunch? Let's move to lunch. Right. How many people are you cooking for in the morning or all day? Now let's move to lunch. Uh, yeah, like lunchtime, man. Lunchtime, man, is like almost the mid, almost the big flow. So anywhere between 1,700 and 2,000 people we're preparing lunch for, for that day. 
you know, and it depends on what we got, man. What's the main course of the meal, whether it's chicken, whether it's hamburgers, whether it's frankfurters, whether it's rice and beans, whether whatever the case it is, the bulk load of that is what we responsible for making. We go into the coolers, man, and we get 30 pound bags of 30 pound boxes of rice. And we cook like about maybe eight, nine boxes of that a uh, meal. Let's move to dinner. What 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 would a typical dinner? How how does dinner work? Same be a way? main course though, but you're gonna get roughly like 23, 2,500 people coming for dinner because that's the last meal of the night. And what happens with the food if it's not eaten, or is the food typically all eaten, or is it certain dishes, or how does that work? It's this it's inserts that the food is put into. It's a lot of those left over. All those dudes is, is put on a, a cart and pushed into the freezers. And to the refrigerators. And they'll serve it. They'll serve it to people who's on key block status, who's in their cell and they can't go because of disciplinary reasons. That'll be their meals. They'll give them the leftovers. The leftovers that we didn't eat on Tuesday, it would be the meal for Wednesday for people that's on key block. They can't leave their cell. So they can't leave their cell, so they're, they're not... Um required to get regular meals they just get leftovers i mean what the if meal, eat the, it all the meal has to be brought to them because they're not able at free liberty to go to the mess hall to eat their meal on their own so what if it's a dish that a lot of the prisoners like i don't know let's say chicken or cornish hens or something like that and all the prisoners that are not on keep lock let's say they all eat the food they mm -hmm. just whatever i don't know pizza day or anything crazy okay so then, your uh, meal your meal on 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 your menu will say Today was pizza day. The pizza ran out. You'll get uh, bologna and cheese with, with, with apples and oranges. Or you'll get peanut butter and jelly with some type of fruit in abundance. Two, three pieces of fruit. Or you'll get something that was thrown together like rice and one of these toppings that I'm telling you about that they'll just bust open and spread it all over your thing like Hungary goulash. Or, or chili con 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 cane or something like that and then it, you'll have your meal but the meal had already ran out and no one cares they'd just be mad for a little while but the meal ran out and they came out and gave you a substitute so because the meal ran out and because they're in heat lock or lockup status or protective right. custody or whatever they are not required to eat what y'all eat yeah because they figure like if you did something man to lose your privilege and to be free liberally to walk to the mess hall and pick your food and serve it and pick it up, eat it and eat it in the dining hall. If they feel that you did something to jeopardize that, then you get what they give you. And the key block trade being bought to your sale. They call it meals on wheels. That's interesting. So basically when your rights are taken into prison for committing some kind of infraction or assault, mm -hmm. they're also taking a basic necessity to you from you rather like eating. Yeah, because if you're not able to go to the mess hall, they have to make these trays and then they have to be brought over to you. Nah, I just wanna, you know And you're make... giving the tray. You're giving the tray that was made already. Yeah, I just want people to hear this that, you know, yeah. commit crimes. And what, yeah, things. whatever was left over, you know, like I'm saying, whatever was left over, they'll go in the coolers and they'll pull out insert pans. If it was some rice and chili con con left over, or if it was rice with vegetables left over, or whatever, they'll heat that stuff up, steam it, heat it, and make key block trays, and you'll be one that's getting one of that meal, and that meal might have been sitting in the freezer. They keep it regulated at, at cold enough temperatures so the bacteria doesn't set in the food. However, you're getting leftover food that was there Monday. Today's Wednesday. You're getting it for lunch, you know. So I'm going to clear that if you're already in prison, so when they say you get three hots in a cot, however, if you commit an infraction and it's sent to lock up or keep lock for any reason, you may lose your one of your hots. So one of your hots which would be food, may not be equivalent to what everybody else gets. That's correct, yeah.